guys, I'm here with Eric Chang from DJI and we figured we'd get a, a quick couple tips from him on filters and the importance of filters when you're flying aerial shots. Tell us a little bit about what kind of filters you use when you're flying and why. The Inspire One comes with two filters. It comes with a clear filter and a, a, a neutral density or ND filter. We're, it's really, really bright right now. So our ND filter is designed to knock out some light uh, so you can get slower shutter speeds and our lens is fixed at f2.8. Okay. Um, and what that means is your shutter speed is going to be running one one thousandth, maybe even Real faster. High. Yeah. And Which basically means the shutter's open for one one thousandth of a second, right? So it's really, really quick. Yeah, it's really quick. So you, you don't get any... Um, uh, one of the biggest reasons people use slower shutters for video especially is because you actually want some motion blur, mm -hmm. which makes the video look smoother and more natural. We're used to that in, in cinema and TV. Okay, cool. So what kind of differences in the video, like what, what kind of scenario Scenario, would you want to use a filter like that um, and what differences will it make on the video? Well most people when they're shooting video for productions are trying to get what what's called a 180 shutter. You're shooting in 24p you want to shoot at 148 shutter so a lot of people actually use they use variable variable ND filters um, or choose ND filters in an ISO that will give you that shutter speed. In practice with a camera that that is fixed at 2.8 it's very hard to get shutter speeds that slow unless you're shooting early in the morning or in the late afternoon. Okay so you have control of all the different uh, settings on your camera. Um, speaking of settings what kind of settings uh, do you typically use uh, you know in certain kinds of environments like today we're kind of partially cloudy. Uh, the lighting's pretty good um, but go, yeah. could you tell us a little bit about what your typical settings are on a, on a daily basis? For, for stills, we, so we shoot to Adobe DNG RAW and to JPEG, mm -hmm. and you can shoot simultaneously to both. So I'm pretty much always in that mode. Okay. You know, I want to shoot JPEG in, in case I want to transfer to my phone, which you can do, um, or and I want to shoot uh, RAW to have maximum dynamic range and quality. On the video side, pretty much if you're in the US, you want to sh be shooting 30 or 24. You want to sort of be compatible with NTSC people. Um, and then if you're in Europe, of course, you're shooting 25. So NTSC and PAL is an option. So make sure you go through and pick the one. If you're missing a frame rate, it's probably because you're in the wrong format. And then you can shoot lower resolutions, so 1080p at 60 frames a second. So if you want to shoot something that you can slow down later mm -hmm. or something that looks really, really smooth on the computer, yep, um, you can choose 60. So I, I almost, I wouldn't shoot 1080p over 4K unless I were going for 60 frames a second. Yes. Uh, now one of the differences I noticed between the Phantom versus the Inspire um, and then also some big scratch builds like what Eric builds is uh, being able to fly solo and, and operate the camera and the machine all at once versus having two operators, right? Right. Uh, so what, I mean, what you'll see in almost all higher end or, or professional video production are that people who are flying are typically working in pairs. So you have a pilot and then you have a camera operator. Now if you're a really, really good pilot, you can probably get away with doing most of the moves you want to do yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. um, but they can also be difficult to do if conditions aren't perfect. You know, if you have really strong winds or gusty winds, um, or you need um, you need situational awareness. You know, if you have a lot of obstacles around, you, you want you want to really be looking at yeah. the aircraft, or you want to be looking out of the front. Mm -hmm. So you need a second camera, which of course our Inspire doesn't have. Yeah. So that second operator allows one pilot to be totally focused on flying, and of course the operator can do much more complex movements with yep. the camera. And they're both kind of their own separate specialties. So you, somebody's obviously going to be specializing in flying really well, and then the other one is actually a photographer that's just along for the ride and is looking for composition and that kind of thing. Right, that's right. So I, I think, you know, doing, but what's really interesting is if you're not used to working with a partner, it, it can be confusing. And frustrating. Because, yeah, yeah, and frustrating. I'm not used to flying with the camera person. I'm also not used to being the camera operator. I'm used yeah. to doing both. Yeah. So when I fly with someone, I see the camera moving and I feel like I'm turning, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would, I would imagine it takes a, a certain kind of connection between two people to be able to communicate, a lot of communication, I'd imagine. Yeah. So uh, Eric and Romeo actually brought an Inspire with two remotes set up, so we're gonna go check it out right now. We set it up so he's gonna be flying. I'm running the camera. We set up my my stick, so everything's on one stick. So I have full control of the camera. I can actually go 360. I can look all around, um, and we're gonna go up and and, and kind of test what you can do with dual operator. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Should we fly? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm recording now. Cool, we're rolling. Yeah. All right. So why don't we bring it right down the side of the group of people here, and I'll see okay. if I can. I'll, I'll keep back it up and then I'll zoom away. Okay, starting from here. <laughs> Sound good? Sounds good, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm just flying forward, which is like a... These articles and videos. Uh, right in front of us, kind of going sideways. Radio control uh, content, aerial photography content. Um, 
It's a cake. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little different. When I play video games, I play inverted. So oh, up is oh, down yeah. and down is up. And which we can change. Oh yeah, you see the, the, the leg just came into view because of the wind. Yeah, I did here. This is a good, well, we should show what the gimbal is actually doing because there's actually quite a bit of wind here. Mm -hmm. um, and the aircraft's moving around quite a bit. So I'm going to drop. Want me to look up a little bit as much as possible? Um, here, I'll turn. I have to there, oh, there you go, yeah. Okay, now I've dropped the landing gear. I see it. And, and what I'm going to do is some pretty aggressive maneuvering. Right. Okay. Go, go, go for it. It's just locked in. Right. So yeah, and I don't even think we mentioned it, but this is using a three axis gimbal, um, which is obviously super important when flying AP. And you're That's still free cool. to use the camera as if yeah. I weren't doing anything. I can bang on the sticks too. Yeah. So the, the Inspire ones, the gimbal uh, range is about 720. So okay. you can go around twice and then you'll kind of hit the end. Okay. And then you have to recenter the gimbal. So why don't I fly in a little circle around us? Okay. And you can do whatever you want with the camera. Yeah. So this is, we'll kind of do the standard orbit, right? And what I will do is not. Uh, I will not fly it nose in. Okay. Right? I'm just gonna fly it like a box. I'm just looking down on us right now. Really, really cool shot. I have to turn around and look at it, which I'm not used to. <laughs> cool. Now I'll come in a little bit closer. And I'll drop down. Okay, ready? Yep. And go up now. Awesome. Nice communication. <laughs> yeah. So one thing too, and uh, not necessarily on the Inspire, but on uh, a lot of bigger DIY uh, scratch built, um, if you're flying with like an SLR, I've known a lot of guys, it's a, it's a pretty heavy duty setup, but you'll actually have control of the lens um, where you can zoom in and out. And uh, I know that your gimbal spot is modular, right? Yeah, the gimbal spot's modular, so you can expect more cameras in the future. Um, this is really just the first camera. The future, yeah. yeah, and I'd imagine that the Inspire seems pretty beefy, so I could imagine <laughs> it could hold quite the payload. Yeah, it's definitely overpowered for the current payload. All right, so I'm just gonna fly ahead towards these trees. Yeah. So I have a button on the back of my transmitter that actually centers the gimbal. So this gimbal has full 360 degrees. I'm actually panning around right now. And then as soon as I want to see what Eric's flying towards, I just hit the button and it recenters it right back up. So I'm looking right at it. A real sensitive gimbal too. You can, you can really just barely touch the stick and get that slow pan shot. Um, so it really, it really, there's a lot of room for creativity, which is really, really cool. If you are shooting in 4K and say you're flying aggressively and you get a, an arm or a motor um, in the shot, um, if you're shooting in 4K, you can actually crop it and still be able to export at 1080. Um, right. Gives you a little bit more resolution so you can zoom in and uh, and still get a good shot. Very, very cool. Yeah, so one of the things that I like to do as a, as a single operator is also use the gimbal screen follow mode. And so it's, it's pretty common that you'll go and point at something like I'm now I'm pointing at us. Now I lock it in in free mode. And now no matter what I do, I can fly left and right. Yeah, the gimbal is kind of locked in, even if I fly uh, and I'm yawing quite a bit. And actually, you can't tell. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Right. Right. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Kind of funky to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally you just see a leg go across. Yeah. Um, and now we're at 28% battery. So cool. this whole flight has been on one, actually less than one battery. Cool. What do you say? Bring it in for landing? Uh, yeah. Let's bring it in. <laughs> I don't want to blow too much dust. Okay, cool. Well, nice flying, man. Yeah, thanks. Nice operating. Yeah, well, that was actually my first time. It was a lot of fun. Next time I got to get inverted on, on pitch. Um, but we want to thank you guys for watching, and hopefully this uh, gives you a little bit of insight on dual operator when it comes to aerial photography. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me.